Welcome to this tutorial of sunflowers. And my name is Celeste Jacoby, and I own Creature Realms. And uh, my mission here is to help to uh, teach people how to paint. So my history is a illustrator um, at Cornish College of the Arts. Has some training there, but I've been painting for a long time. So let me jump into the instructions. I'm on board with all the details of myself. So um, just to make everyone's life a little easier. I'm going to go ahead and put this painting together with uh, these brushes. So I have a 10 by 10 inch canvas. I have a flathead brush. I have um, a smaller flathead brush. I have a large round tip. And I have a medium round tip. And a small round tip. And I also have a fan brush. I love this brush and it's fun for textures, which I'm going to do in the background of the sunflower. So um, I also teach classes, so I'm going to actually just give notes of how the painting would look for people coming to my classes. Uh, sometimes we don't want to deal with the drawing part, we want to go straight to painting. So they'll probably come in with the uh, canvas already slightly colored with the outline of what we're going to paint so we can get to painting right away. Um, so uh, just depending on everyone's skill level, I'll try to cover all that in this uh, tutorial. So the first thing you want to do in painting is you want to give your canvas a base tone. And for this sunflower painting, I'm going to be using a light blue. And so I'm going to be using a cobalt blue. And let me just show you what that one looks like. Um, I'm using this one here. It's a Liquitex. It's cobalt blue. You could use any kind of brand you want um, just to fit your budget. So I'm going to use the flathead just to get some color onto the canvas. And you want to go ahead and just dip that in. Uh, you go ahead and put it on your, your palette. I'm just using this as a palette right now. So I take my flathead brush and I'll just work that into the paints. And this will give you a good time to like get used to the paint being applied to your canvas. So this, you just want to quickly get the paint onto your canvas. So I usually do some scrubs. Just go in circles, get it on there. You can also add a little bit of water. Um, I'll just, I have my little ceramic in here of water. So I will dip my brush in there. And just go ahead and work that on the palette. And you can start to see it smooth, it flows a little bit better. You don't wanna get too much water onto this or else it starts to create this drip effect that happens, um, which is a nice texture for some paintings, but this one we don't really want that. So just make sure you're not getting the drip uh, coming down on this. So I usually just kind of rub this around the circles just to get this going. Whenever you do a flat color to start off with, it really helps to kind of pull all the colors together. So you want to always have a base color. So it's basically just your first initial wash, which is what I'm going to do here. There. And then I'll usually go left to right. And I'll go up and down just to work that in a little better. And let's see if I hold this still. And some people like to paint the edges of their canvas at this time. So you can do that if you'd like. This will help reduce the cost of framing. So I'll paint this one edge here. And I'll just paint this other side. I'm not gonna be too worried about that, so you guys get the, the gist of that. So for the last one, I'll just kind of smooth this out and go in a horizontal left to right pattern with my brush. So that was the work of the flathead. We got that on really quick. And make sure every time you use your brush, clean it off. So I'm just rinsing it right now in my water. And don't worry about your water. It's gonna have like a little light blue tint to it. That's fine. So we're just gonna be outlining the, um, the sunflower. So you can see there's a little light blue. It doesn't matter. Okay, once again, you kinda want the uh, colors to blend a little bit. So the next thing we're going to is getting the sunflower set up. And to that, uh, we're going to go ahead and use a color that's very similar to the sunflower itself. 
So I'm going to use this uh, yellow oxide. And once again, it's more like a, um, it's kind of a yellow okra. So it's more of a medium tone of the sunflower. So I'm just going to put a little bit onto my palette. You'll see how little it is. So we're just going to use this to outline the sunflower. As you can see, it's a, it's a pretty small dab there. Not big at all. Take a look there real quick. And you can see my pinky so you can measure it up with something. There. So, um, for this, I'm going to take my medium round. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and create the outline of the sunflower. So I'm going to give it a nice center. So let's do this, do a circle. You can get a sense of how wide you want it. I'm going to have my, my blooms or my petals kind of go around here. So and the sunflower might be a little bit bigger in the center. So I'll just go like that. So keep working your circle until you have it the size that you want. And you might go readjust later. And then I'll just do some, some random petals. So petals are pretty easy. You just do a bunch of, you know, curves that eat, that meet at the end. And just work them from the outer edge of the, uh, the large circle. So I'll just work those in real quick. And then we'll put some more edges behind it because there are some petals uh, behind these top ones, of course. And don't worry about getting the lines all perfect because we'll be working the background um, first. And so we'll, we'll get over a few of these lines, but we just want to get a roadmap of where our flower is going to be at. So I have all my, my front ones, and I'm going to go and do the back ones. So I'll usually just kind of go in between these spaces and just do another one just to give it some more depth. And don't worry about making them all uniform. I mean, nature in itself isn't uh, symmetrical. So, I might put another one right there. Maybe know right there are some random pieces. So there's my sunflower. I'm pretty happy with it. And at this moment, you can kind of adjust if you want to have one side a little bit larger than the other. I think that's good right there. I'm going to leave it there. And let's give it a stem. So I'm going to put mine right here. And it's going to be a little bit thicker than that. So I'm going to pretend that's the center line of the stem. So I'm just going to go a little bit wider. There. So we're getting some nice color on the uh, the palette. Um, then I'll probably go in and just do some light strokes just to get some of this color set. So since everything's going to have an orange tint to it, uh, just go ahead and set those colors in. It doesn't have to be completely solid color. Like I said, it's kind of nice to have some of the, the blue behind it. And we'll be adding detail onto this. So we just want to get some paint on there. We'll come back later and uh, work on the sunflower. So go ahead and knock those in right away. Like I said, the edges don't have to be perfect because we will be refining them. And I want to get this moving a little bit faster, so I'm going to use my small, uh, my medium tip round just to get the edges in right here, the very small areas. And what I'm going to do is go back and use my big round to fill in the rest of this. I 
It looks like I'm going to need some more paint. So I'm going to get back to this uh, yellow oxide from A2. There we go. And dip your brush back in there. And let's get those tips finished off. And try not to lay it down too, too thick. Um, you can get some texture going, it's kind of nice. Some people like to paint with texture, some people like it really smooth. So depending on your style of painting, um, if you want to have smoother strokes, then you know, take your time to put that on and really blend it out. But for this one, the sunflower, I really like to have some texture on it. I think that'd be really pretty. Especially when you hang in a room that has lots of light that changes the day. Then you get some really awesome shadows on that. There we go. Just keep dipping your brush in there and get those tips taken care of. And for those of you who want to finish this off faster, some of you might be using larger canvases. Let's go ahead and clean off that other brush, the one we just used, the medium round. And I'm going to jump into my large round tip brush and just knock the rest of this in. Get that color in there. And once again, don't worry if your, your paints are all even. We just want to get some, some paint in there. There. So now we've filled all that space and it's still dry so I might you know, take my small round again and just kind of remind myself where that circle's at. There, so I can see what's happening there. Another thing to note is whenever you paint, um, work the paint brushes kind of in the angle of the uh, object. And that way it has more of a sculptural element to it. So as you can see the petals, I'm just kind of curving left and right and bring it towards the uh, center part. That just kind of evens it a little more. Don't ever do your brush strokes like this because it just doesn't look, it will make it not look like a sunflower. It has some interesting textures if that's what you're going for. But, and then when I get to the center part, I usually take my big round and just do circles. There. So now we have the, um, basically the flat color of the sunflower and we have our background. So we're going to let the sunflower dry, dry and we're going to work on the background. Um, so this part is just going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of texture. I'm just going to clean off my brushes. Get those ready for next time. So what we're going to do is add a darker uh, purplish uh, color to the left with a little bit of a brown and medium blue in the center and then the light, um, the light cobalt blue to the right. So let's start with a dark to light and I'm going to go back to using this large brush. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab another palette just so I don't mix these colors too much. Now the left side is going to have a nice dark brown, which is going to be a nice complement to the brown we're going to put here. So I'm going to go use my uh, Burnt Umber, this one right here by uh, Liquitex. And the Liquitex is, is a, a better brand. It's not the best, um, but it's a better brand. So the A2 is a, a lower grade student, but it's affordable and you can use it easily to put your paints on initially. Um, when you start getting to the nicer details, um, you'll want to start using the, the nicer paints. So I just put a little bit of this burnt umber on my palette. Let me just show you real quick. There's that much. It's my pinky for reference. 
So always start with the minimal amount of paints. You can always add more later. You want to save money when you paint because painting can become expensive. So here is my large round. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and start to kind of dab the color in. So we want to work this pretty fast. Like I said, this is going to be a lot of texture. So let's just get this going. And trust me when I say this is not going to look lovely right away. The painting starts to look good close to the end when you start to pull everything together with the detail. So do not fret. This looks beyond disgusting. <laughs> it's going to look pretty awesome in the end. So just, you got to trust me. So I'm basically just dabbing it on there. So I'll put a little bit on my palette and just work those dots in there. And you want to make it a little thicker at the bottom. So I push a little bit harder, get some more on there and push really hard. get some more and I'll bring them out a little bit start to separate them a little more a little bit lighter on the the stippling so it's gonna be heavier with this color on the left and then it's gonna be a little bit lighter on the right hand side not as many stipples of this burnt umber Here's some up here let's do some smaller dots up in this corner we're going to be adding other colors on top of this, so that's going to make it really awesome looking. And I'll go a little bit lighter on the touches close to the, uh, the leaves. Just to add a few in there. And I'll probably put a few by the stem. I'll put one right there, a little bit thicker. And then let's put some up here to the uh, top right of the flower. Let me put a little some thicker stipple dots at the top, more of a smudges. We'll put a few over here, very lightly. And then to the far right, we'll do a few. We'll hit a hard a few times for the larger smudges and soft ones, little light touches, stippling. And we'll probably do some down here, some harder touches, and then lighten up a little. And go back in here. I only have a little bit left of this color, so I might as well just use it. Put a few over here also, some dots there. This is where you can have fun with it, you know, choose where you want to put some of these dots, these stipples. But I would make one side a little bit heavier than the other. There. Okay, once again, not lovely, but this is uh, setting everything up for the layers and layers of colors we'll be putting on it. I got a little bit more of this color, so I'm just going to put it back in the corner. There we go. And now I want to make this a little bit darker on the side, so I'm going to bring the, uh, the Dioxide Purple Hue, this A2, into it. And you can use any purple, really, um, or you can mix red and blue together, however you want to go about doing that. So, oh, and I should mention, for some people that are in my class um, that show up to paint, I'll usually wash, if we have a limited amount of time, sometimes I have two-hour sessions, I'll usually wash the background with a blue and just do that light outline of the, um, the sunflower and not fill it in yet or do the texture. So that way they, the drawing's already there so they could just start working on the painting and techniques behind it. So, going back to uh, adding more texture to the left. So I got my purple dioxide. Just gonna put a little bit there. And I'm gonna take my large brush again and go back to dipping it in there. So this is nice because it's gonna start uh, blending the colors together. So you can go a little bit thicker with these and you can start to see the colors start blending together. So since we're making this a little bit darker, um, you don't have to cover everything. So I would go a little bit more to the left and just start doing those bigger, bigger stippling, the smudges. And do some little stippling up here. 
Let me bring some out here, some smaller ones. Maybe some little ones up here. So basically we're just randomly putting this one around to kind of carry the color through. I'm gonna get a little bit more because I ran out. There we go. There's a reference for size. Light stippling there. I'll put some up here. And we're going to be adding some nice light yellow to this and a little bit of orange. So it'll pull all these colors together. So let's do a little bit there. And just go ahead and try to keep this on the, uh, the raw umber area because these two colors look really nice together. Put a few more little dots in there. A few go out, maybe some larger smudges in that area. Some little ones there. So we're really gonna build a nice heavy texture to the left of the sunflower. Okay, let's put some bigger dots there. Once again, don't worry if you get into this, the flower like I did there, the stem, we know where it's at. We'll put it back in later. stipples there in the top left. Lovely. All right. And that's phase two of the textures. I got a little bit more, so I want to use my paints. I'll just dig into that. Really get it in the corner over here. Maybe some light ones over here. Okay, now go ahead and clean your brush off again. There you go. And make sure to put your jar or your brushes in something like a jar so it's standing up straight and try to avoid the, uh, the tips hitting each other. So if you can keep them separate, that's always good. Preserve your, your brushes. So we have a, we're building our background. We still have the sunflower visible. We know what's going on with that. Um, now the paints probably are a little bit too wet right now to jump back into the background again. So we're gonna head back to the sunflower and start working some of those elements in. So um, what I'm gonna wanna do is define more of the center bulb. So what I'm gonna do on this one is jump into the red gold would be good and some of that burnt umber so i'm going to go back to my other palette i've got two palettes here one for the background and one for the sunflower um i do a little bit of the blue unfortunately on the, the sunflower one but as long as you keep those separate it's not a big deal so i could put my uh red gold in there which is a2 put it in the corner And for this, I'm going to use my medium round. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start defining this left area. So the sun's gonna be heading in this direction from top right. So what we're gonna do is put our brush in there, just do the tip of it. And we'll see if it's dark enough to take. We might have to go into our raw umber. So what I'll do is just go in this corner and just start doing some, some dots, just so I can define where that's at. go so you already see the outline of your your center of the sunflower okay, so that's good that lets me know where it's at let me do a little bit down there so just a little bit of a, a lower curve at the base of the center bulb of it Okay. 
And now we take a little bit of the uh, burnt umber and go into that to bring it in some more, just to make it a little darker. So here is the burnt umber again. I'm gonna put a little dot right there. You don't have to clean off your brush because we like these colors mixing together. So just a little dab into the top and then I'm going to just put it into the left side. And let me go to the other side of this video camera. I just don't want to block everyone's view. Let's see, there we go. So you'll be going like this, and you'll start to see the colors already blend together because that um, the orange is still wet. But that's okay. Get as much as you can in there. And we're just going to define that left side a little more. And blending paints right now is a good thing, so don't worry about that. So just stipple really lightly on the left. And normally we work from dark to light, so that's also why it never looks great in the beginning because everything kind of looks dark and muddy. But when you get to the lighter colors, they'll really start to pop some more. All right, so we have that set now to the left side. And what we're going to do next is uh, check the background, see if that's dry enough, or we can continue on the uh, sunflower. So I know that blue is already dry there. Um, so we could jump into doing some more of the darker blue for the background. So we're gonna go back to the background and let the sunflower dry a little bit. And right here, I have a little bit of ultramarine blue, A2. You don't need a lot for this because we're just gonna cover a little bit of this area, this blue area to make a little darker blue. I'm gonna put it next to my cobalt blue right here, just a little bit. So we put my mix those together. And for this one, I'm gonna start using my fan brush. So here's a fan brush. This brush is really fun. Um, it gives you a lot of texture and that's what we're going for anyways, texture. So I'm gonna take the cobalt blue and start working it with the ultramarine blue just to get a nice in-between color. And then I'm gonna go in and start stippling some of that darker blue in. You don't have to hit it with the complete full brush. You can go on the side of the fan brush. I mean, you can hit it down this way. You can do the corner. And I'll probably stick to the corner just to keep it light. Don't drench your brush. Make sure you only have a little bit at the top. And you just dab it on your palette. If you feel like that a lot, you can dab it here to see how it's gonna start laying down just to kind of remove some paint. So I'll go in and just add some of this nice deeper blue. We want to keep a little bit of the light blue though, but we can go back in and add some more if we lose too much. It's a nice thing about working forward and backwards. I'm just going to stipple some more on the side. So the fan brush is one of my favorite brushes because it does give you a lot of different uh, variations for how the paint is laid down. Once again, don't worry if you start to get into the, the, the petal area, we'll be adding more and later. So basically we're gonna get to the point where we're happy with our background enough that we can really start detailing those edges for the, the petals of the sunflower. And go back in there again, get some on this side. A little bit to the right. It's okay if you start blending those colors together. We do want that to happen. I'm gonna put a little bit behind the stem because I want that to carry through the texture. And then I'm just gonna take the corner of my fan brush and just kind of hit randomly in these areas. I'm gonna have a little bit more stippling of this light blue or this darker blue on the side. And you'll see like as you keep stippling, it's lighter and lighter, obviously, because the paint is uh, becoming less and less. So I'm going to flip to the other side because I've really been using that. So these will be lighter touches on the right hand side, because once again, we're trying to show that light to dark element. So 
I'll just do a few, you know, you could turn the brush as you're working to kind of give more of a random texture. There. And now um, I do want to make this blue, this uh, light blue, just a little bit lighter. Cause remember, we just did a wash of that. So I'm just going to get some of that on my palette. That nice cobalt blue. And you can see that there. Once again, I'm going to dip my fan brush in. And go back and add some more of that color there. So you see it's a little bit of a darker blue because it's not washed in. So we'll do some stippling in there. You can see I'm just lightly touching the canvas. Really fast, kind of sporadic moves. You can turn the, the brush as you move it. And dip this back in. I'm gonna add a little more of the light blue over here. Just try to keep some of that light blue in these areas. But just not a lot, not as much as over here. Let's introduce a few, few stipplings in here. Maybe a few up here. And then I'll just use it a little more light and sparingly to the right hand side. There. Now I've got some nice texture going on and um, yeah, you know, once again, it's muddy looking, but we'll be adding some orange and some yellow, which will really make it pop some more, which is nice. I'm gonna put a few up here. Just kind of break that up a little bit. All right. So go ahead and wash your fan brush off again. And by now your colors are probably really muddy in your water and this would be a good time to go clean out your your water so we we'll take a break and do that and we'll return to uh, painting this lovely sunflower so we should be back with some clean water and a nice break um, so we're gonna start working now on the the bulb and go back to the flower let this dry a little bit more so we want to add a nice little kind of green element up there just to add a little more color. So you can either, if you are comfortable just buying tubes of green or you can mix your own colors. Um, the lime green is a little hard to hit on that color for mixing, so I buy mine straight. Um, this is Brilliant Yellow Green from uh, Liquitech Basics. Once again, just go to any art supply store and find the closest one you can. So what I'm going to do is take my uh, small round, but first I want to um, just do a darker green. It's going to be more in this area. So or here, I'm sorry, medium round. So I have my palette here. I do have some blue left over and I have some yellow. So I'm just going to mix those two together to make some a nice kind of mid-range green. And once again, this is going to be a little muddy looking, but don't worry about that. This is just the base. This is the darkest area and most you won't see most of this at the end. So that's about right there. Like I said, not the prettiest color, but we're going to build up on this. And so I kind of want that, that darker green about right here. So I'm just going to do a little circle there and just dot it in. So now my green element is going to be right there. So it looks more like a, a brown or a gray, but don't worry about that. We just want to, we just want to point to where it's at so we know what to build up on later. So now that it's there, it's good to let dry. So clean this brush off. And then we're going to start working on the, um, filling in this area a little bit more while we're letting that dry. 
So I'm going to take the medium tip round again. And once again, if you're using a bigger canvas, you might want to go for your large round tip. So I'm just going to add some more of this, uh, this yellow color right here. This is the yellow oxide. So now I just want to kind of remove these little spots right here you can see. So I'm going to start doing those brush strokes again. I might try to refine the edges a little bit more. Remember we did layers of different petals. So you can kind of see where those are at. So you don't feel like you have to go to the very end at this moment. Just kind of go over that again just to build up those spaces. And I can still see the edge of my circle right here. I'll put one there. One there. And get myself some more of the, the yellow oxide. And I'm pretend one's like there. So you can kind of start to see it highlight a little bit more. You can see that in the video. They're a little bit lighter, so they're coming out some more. So I'll put another one there. And this is the part where you start building up the color. And then we'll go back to the ones behind it and put a darker color. And if you feel like your brush is getting kind of thick with the paints, what you can do is when you dip it in there, because I got a lot on my brush, you can see right there. What I'll do is I'll put it on the edge of my palette and roll the brush and pull it towards you. And that makes a nice thin tip. So what we're doing now is just adding some lighter elements in there. It's very subtle, but you're gonna start to see it build up. So we're just gonna put a few of the leaves back in. They don't, always, they don't have to touch the very edge because these are the top ones. And then we'll go back in um, with a, this color, a little darker color and get the back one set up. We add a little bit more orange into the ones in the background. There we go. And once again, you can see that I'm using, I'm actually starting at the tip and going down and kind of sculpting the petals out. So go in the shape of the petals. Then I'll go to the stem and block that in a little bit more. Just bring that color down there. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of the, uh, the orange in here to get the, the background color to show more of those petals back there. So, and I've got this orange right here from the earlier. They're, it's more of a red gold, but it's a nice color, the A2. And that's already right there. So you can start to blend these colors a little bit and see how they look. Sometimes you can blend them on the canvas as you're applying it. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit and blend these two together. You can see a mid-tone happening. And just give it a test to see how it's coming out. That's pretty nice. You can start to see more of a, an orangish color happening on the left. So this one, remember, is behind some other ones. So you want to start differentiating those. There's one back here. And one over here. Add some more orange. I'll do one back here. 
There's a petal right there, so I'm just gonna go around this corner and add some there. And jump back in there. I'm gonna roll my brush out, just get a finer tip. And I'll put one right here. And just kind of go sporadically around the edges. You might want to skip a few because we're going to do different variations of this color as we go around. So I might put a little one there. And you can start to see it's building up different layers. Like I said, the transition is very subtle, but when you start doing it on your own canvas, you'll see it. And I'll put one up here. And dip back into my orange. And just do a little, like, you dip into your orange and just do maybe one or two strokes into the yellow. Roll it out again. And put one in this corner. And remember, it doesn't have to be too perfect over here yet because we're still going to go back and add some of the textures to the left hand side. And I'll do this one. And we'll also be going over the front ones again with some lighter yellow so they'll pop out some more. Remember, just keep curving those petals out left and right to really start showing an arc. And get some more of the orange. There, so the color is becoming a little bit more sporadic in different places, which is nice. I'll put a petal there. I add one over here. I'll put one right there. The next other one. So now we've introduced some orange in here, which is good. Give us more variations. And you'll also see if you try to go over other paints that are wet, they'll start to blend. Um, so on the stem, I'm just going to put a little stroke to the left of this color because I also want to introduce some of that into the stem. There. So now um, we can jump back to the background, let this dry a little bit. Um, well, actually, let's do this real quick uh, just to add this. We got a lot of this color, so let's just start bringing in. Another thing you could do with painting to make it interesting is different uh, elements of texture. So we have some nice smooth lines, you know, going in this direction, that direction. And then in the middle, we're going to do a lot of stippling. So let's grab onto that yellow orange we just did. Let's try to mix those together. And let's start doing some, some more stippling in this area. Let's just really build that color up. We're going to go back in with the, uh, the browns, do some lighter stippling and some yellows eventually to build that back up. So just step all that in. There. So now we're building up the color some more. So that's good. Um, so yeah, let's go back to the background and start building that up. So we're going to clean off our, our brush, our medium round. And so we're going to add some orange and some yellow in here. So we already have some orange right there on our palette. Um, so I'm going to go back into my medium round brush. You can see some right there. I'll use it till it's all gone. And my brush is clean, so I'm going to jump back into that orange. And then we're going to start stippling this in. So we're going to put some on the left, you know, just very lightly. We'll see how it takes. There. You can tell it's dry. It's not blending very much. Let's do some... We'll first do some sporadic dots, and then we'll come back in with a fan brush and kind of break it up a little more. So just do some random dots here and there. 
it's still wet, um, just jump back into your, your color. You start to see it blend, that's okay. And then just go back in. We can always hit it later with some more orange, let it dry. And jump back into my orange. Do some little dots there. And go back in. And then once we get the really light yellow on it, then it's really gonna look awesome and come through. Some more dots, some more stippling. A few down here. And you can jump into your yellow a little bit too, the oxide yellow. Just kind of work those two together. And put some over here. You want to put more of the uh, orangish yellow to the right hand side since we have a lot of colors already happening to the left. We'll put a lot in this far right corner. Gonna jump back into that again, the orange and the yellow. So this would be the mid tones for the background for the texture, and then we're gonna come back at the end and do some really light highlight textures. But we're gonna keep those kind of at a minimum because that's highlights you really wanna use sparingly because they're the most impactful. So you wanna be careful with them so they still have a high influence on your painting without being overwhelming. Step to the right a little bit. And down here. There, that's nice. We did pretty good coverage for just using the, the flat rounds. So we won't touch the, um, the fan yet, because uh, that also gives us some interesting texture for the, uh, the lighter stuff. So now we're gonna go back into the uh, sunflower and add some more elements there. We're gonna start doing some lighter greens. Um, so let's go, do, go ahead and do that. So once again, you have a medium round. Clean that off. And this is where you're gonna use that lime green right here. Liquitex lime green. It's called brilliant yellow green actually. Anything lime green will work. So I'm gonna put this on my, my palette again. Just put a little bit there. And take your clean round tip brush, the medium size. And just go ahead and do a few stipplings in there, some dots. Keep it really thin at the top, not too much paint. And the bulb of the sunflower kind of has a random circular thing going on. Um, so I'm going to show some of those strokes. So I'll just kind of arc around a little bit really lightly. Just let it lightly pick up the paint. You don't want to do too much. Once again, these are highlights, so use them sparingly. You want to keep that darker edge up there, so don't put too much in that area up here. Just keep it down here. And I'll do some more arcing right here. A few more little dots. And then we'll go back in with the uh, medium tone uh, green and just kind of fill those areas in to push the dark backs a little bit more. There, so we have a nice uh, part right there that's going to give it a different textural element. And then we're going to build up the bulb some more in the center with those little stipplings. So go ahead and clean off your medium round again. And we want to add some of the darker browns now. So I have a little bit of that burnt umber on my palette here. So I'm going to just take the tip of my brush in there. And I'm going to roll it out. So I get a really nice thin tip. Some of you might want to go to the small round, it's up to you. And now I'm going to work on really darkening this edge down here. 
So your paint should be dry in that area by now. So I'm just working on stippling that corner in. And I'm gonna go to the other side of this camera. I'm not blocking that side. And just do some heavier stippling over here. Really work that color in. So it's kind of have like a crescent moon shape down there. You push a little bit harder in the dark areas where the shadow would be. And then we're gonna go ahead and just do some random dots working our way up. We're gonna do more of the smaller dots down here, and then as we get up here, it's gonna be less and less of those dots. And that kind of shows how it's getting dark to light. So once again, use your medium round or your small round at this point, but just really drag your brush out like I showed you. So put your brush in there and then just turn it while you're pulling it out. Gets a nice thin tip point. And then we're just gonna work on bringing some of those uh, dots up. And this is where you can still be more random on your dots. So I'm gonna put a lot more down in this area right here and then less up there. Just keep dipping into your burnt umber when you need it. And just build up those dots. Don't worry if it goes on too heavy at first, like in this area. You can always just dip your brush back in there and just kind of spread it around a little more. And you can still see the paint is a little wet still, so it'll start to tone down the color. And we're gonna be going over again with the, um, the orange to the light yellow, so any big areas like this we could break up later. So I have a thinner tip now, or you can go to your smaller round and just do some lighter dots at the top really light touches because this is where the highlight is going to be at so you don't want as much of the shadow in that area so just light touches there okay that's good so we're building up the center now of the sunflower and then clean your, go ahead and clean your brush off. So now we can go back and uh, start to do some other last textures on the outside. Um, so we're gonna use our fan brush and we're gonna bring in the really light yellow. And this is a yellow we're also gonna be using on the sunflower. So feel free to add that on your, your palette for the sunflower if you still have space. Um, if not, you can go ahead and put it on the other palette, whatever, whichever one you have space in. Um, I'm going to put mine a little bit closer to the yellow-orange because that is a good spot for it. So I have this uh, Liquitex Basic. It's primary yellow. You can use cadmium yellow. So actually, I'll put it right in between here so it's a little away from the blues. And these two are almost dry. So there's my primary yellow. Now I'm going to take my fan brush, which is this one, and do some more fun textures in the back. Uh, once again, don't worry if you overlap these because we really haven't fully refined them. So go ahead and take your fan brush and dip it in there. There we go. In this one, we're going to do some really sporadic hits. So when you do sporadic ones, you know, turn your brush as you're doing it, work on one side, work the other side, just make it as random as possible and that will give you the best results. So I'm going to dip my brush back in there. You know, I might tap it out a little bit, just so it doesn't have tons of paint on it. And then I'll do a first hit up here to see how it looks. That's good. It's like it's sticking. So just do a few hits up there. Then work a few over here. And jump back into your paints. And do a few more over here. And you might have to let your canvas dry a little bit if it's blending too much. You can always go back to it. A few there. Put some in this area, not much. And a few down here. So remember just to keep turning your brush, make it random. 
You can see some really nice yellows popping out there. And they stand out really strong in the shadow area. Okay, and jump back in there again and get a few at the top. I'll put a few over here in this area to the right. It looks like I need some more, so I'm going to jump some more in there. There we go. Put some in this area. And you can make this a little bit thicker. The highlights should be the thickest amount of paint. And so you can see my brush there. So I'll probably put a few here. There's a lot of texture on there, which is good. Put some down here. And in this corner, spots them up there, the bottom. Let's really have fun with this one and work it in. Remember not to put too much though. We want to have more on the right hand side than the left. And I'll probably go back one more time for the paintings over and do a little bit of a lighter yellow, just a few to really punch it out some more. Put some behind there. And as you can see, you know, I'm, da I'm dabbing into where the sunflower is at, but it's kind of giving a nice light green behind it. So I might work that through a little bit. It's where you can play a little bit with your textures in your background, give it an unusual element. Let's do one more. Dip the brush in there. Get some on the far right. I guess I'd probably come back in here and add a lighter one. There. Now we've got a fun sporadic background for our lovely sunflower to rest on. All right, so we should have our third time around cleaning water. So we got our clean water. And we're going to jump back to the sunflower and work on the petals. Since we already have some of the cadmium yellow or that really light yellow, um, this one's a primary yellow, Liquitex. I said cadmium yellow works well. So we have this here with the uh, yellow oxidized or using yellow okra, same thing. So we're going to start doing the edges of the lighter petals and really start pushing those forward some more. Um, so I have my medium round. And I'm going to jump into the cadmium yellow and the okra yellow and just start mixing those. You want to have some more of the cadmium though, so you might want to take a dab of that to the right and just have it in its own area. So your paints might be a little wet still. You'll see once you start to put the paint on how it's uh, pulling up or laying on there. So remember the light elements happening from the top right. So we're going to take a few of these front petals and add the light on the corner. So I'll put one there. So once again, you know, this is where you start to use your tip really finely. So I'll put that a little bit to the right. And I'll get a little bit closer to the, uh, the center of the sunflower. And let's do that for this one too. So we'll take the tip. Remember to work those brush strokes in the angle of the flower petals. So I'll have it a little bit on the right, more on the top, because that's how the, uh, the light would hit it. And jump back into this. So some of it on the right. And more on the tip. We might go in later and add some more of the, the yellow ochre in there, just to make it a little more solid. Right now we're just trying to define more of those highlights. I'll put some over here on this one. There's the tip. I'm going to take it to the right. And 
So those of you who like some more detail, you can uh, go ahead and just do the little strokes. For those of you who like smoother ones, you can do the really long strokes and work them in like that. So it's up to you. I want some texture on this, so I'm going to do the small strokes. So you can start to see that we're adding the light element to the right of each petal. And try not to make the shapes too similar because we're also going to be adding a little bit of a, a shadow element in the center of each petal. So just break it up a little. I might not put as much on the top and just go to the right some. And you can also make the element of the flower look more random by doing faster strokes without thinking about it too much. And that creates instant random. <laughs> so I'm going to put some there, and there, and now that I'm getting closer to the bottom, the sun's going to shift a little bit, the light element, so now it's going to be coming onto the left side, more at the top and less at the bottom. So I'll put more up there and take it down to a fine tip there at the end. So when you think about light hitting it, it's now going to hit more of this edge of the petal and less down this side, if that makes sense. So keep adding that uh, to your, and then maybe right here when it's middle, you could put one a little bit more in the middle. And then fill that off to the right some. Put more at the top here and then take it down to a tip right there because our, our petal is like this right now. There's one behind there. Same with this one. And so jump back into that cadmium again. And then for here, for the back ones, you know, it's going to not be so much light, so I might just put like a little hint of it right here. Out there. There's some more light element there. Very top by the center. And just a little bit down here. I might just pull all three of these together. So you have a strong light in this area. And then bring those down. So as you can see, you see you're starting to put some more light elements in there. Like I said, this is when it starts to pop some more. And we'll go back in and put some darks. So depending on how your paint was laying down, you might want to go over it again. Looks like I could use another round. And I also want to introduce just a little light element down here. So right next to that orange, I'm just going to do a stroke. And for rounded out areas, it's kind of nice to do the highlight kind of in the middle next to the darkest area. That helps to define it a little bit more. I'll go back in over these last highlights and pump them out a little bit more. There, you can start to see it start to lay down a little heavier. Second time you go around. And if you want your, your paints to lay a little, little bit smoother, just put your brush in water just a little bit and rub it around on the palette and you'll start to see a lot of those dots disappear. But don't put too much water on that or you'll start to get your uh, paints dripping down your canvas, which is not good. So avoid that. Let's see, I might blend these two edges together a little bit. We are getting a little light in this area. Maybe this one a little bit more. And same here. There. 
So you can see that part in the center is already kind of popping out towards you. Um, so we're gonna also do some lighting on the tips up here also. Um, so go back in with your brush and we'll just hit a few at the top. Let's see, and every once in a while you'll see like another introduction of a petal. I think I want to put one there. So just mold your your flower as you go. I'm gonna put one over here. Just get those tips lightened up a little bit. And I'm gonna go to the right a little bit on these. And don't worry if there's a lot of texture on the highlights, it's actually really good to have texture for your highlights. So for the ones in the back, you don't wanna take the highlights too far in, maybe just a little bit. Make sure you leave that space for the dark areas. I'll put a little one down there, maybe right there on the side. So as you go further out with the highlights, just go more sparingly. There's a leaf there. Let's put a little one down there. So we'll go back in with the darker one and kind of define those edges again. Put a little more highlight there on this front one. So as you go through painting, you start to see where those colors should be. there at the end. All right, so now you can start to see some more colors coming forward. Um, so our highlights are really taking hold now. Um, but that's just kind of the mid tone of the highlights. So we're going to be doing at least one or two more hits. Um, <clears throat> since we have some highlights left, let's go in and just do some on the center bulb. So once again, we're going to be stippling for the center bulb. So roll out your brush. And we're gonna do more at the top than down here. So let's start at the top area. I'm just gonna start dabbing this in. And probably for the last highlights, we'll add some white to our yellow and to make them really pop out. Try to avoid the brown areas you set in because we still want them to be shown as the darkest part. Go ahead and just really let that texture show through at the top though. Get some more stippling. And once again, as you get close to the bottom, don't put as many down there because that's a darker area. So we'll have most of it up here. We'll have just a few down here. And you can really start to see some really nice textures coming through. There. Lovely. I'm gonna go back in and do a little bit of a darker green in there. Um, because it was more of a, a muddy green. So we'll do like a forest green real quick. So clean off your medium sized round tip. I'm gonna go back into the, the dark ultramarine blue. And this time we're gonna use the cadmium, uh, that lighter yellow to give it more of a, a greener tone. So just, you just need a little bit. So mix those two together and you'll start to see it be a nice green mid-tone. Feel free to use your small round if you want this time. I'm going to use my medium one, but it's up to you. Um, so just go ahead and stipple some color in. I could see I already need a little bit more of the dark blue. So I want to get basically like a nice forest green color. Add a little bit of this lime green to cheat since it's there. That's a little better. 
Let's really give it that dark edge at the top. And bring some down here, do those arcing strokes. A nicer green color and we'll go back in later with the, the lime green and do another round of highlights so um, like I said we're popping out the flower a little bit more but we want to add some more of that orangish color it's pretty nice so we're gonna go back into our this will be the red gold the A2 and I'm gonna put it right here close to my um, yellow since that's a safe area because we do want to mix those two a little bit We'll see how that lays down. We might add um, some of the other yellow or a little bit of the burnt umber. So here we go. We're going to use the medium round. And let's see how this lays down first. So we'll start with the back one because we want to make these a little bit darker so you can kind of start to see where those line up. And put the shadow more on the right. Okay, and I'll put all down here. Really start popping out those colors a little bit more. So I'm going to put these a little bit more on the back ones, on the left side. But I do want to introduce a little bit of it on the front ones. So I'll just go ahead to the left a little bit. Put some over here. And this back one could use it. I'll put some on this side. So we can really make those ones stand out. So we want more of this reddish orange in the back petals. And if you put it on the front just a little bit like this, I put like a little spine there and then bring them down a little. But I would keep it small down there too on the ones behind it. And as they get closer to this petal, we'll put a little bit of a darker kind of orangish red in there. Might use a little bit of the burnt umber, see how that looks. Probably dip into some red for this one. So once again, just make sure that this dark orange is more on the shadow side of the back of the petals and very sparingly on the front if you decide to take it on the, the darker side. So I'll put one there for this one. And there. To the left. I'll do a light one right there in the front, just a little bit. I'll put one over here. And this one's the back petal to the left. And I'm making sure I don't go over the front petal. And this one I'll do a little bit to the left in the front, just slightly down there. So now you can see more of the, the lights and darts are starting to pop out some more. So to the left, down there. So this is still like the in-between phase of the lights and darks. Um, what we're going to do to differentiate the ones from the front to the back is use more of a, um, a kind of a crimson red with the orange around these areas to darken the shadows more and then more of a lighter yellow to pop out the highlights. That's how you really force that contrast. I'll put one there, might highlight 
that set a little bit for the shadow. And I'll probably put some down here for this one. And more to the left there. I'll put some to the left here of this one. Maybe bring it down that way. This one I could probably use in the back. Let's push up a little more. There. So we're really creating some some petals, giving it some more texture, which is pretty nice. And I just take a look at your, your work. You might want to fill in some more in the back with the full orange. It's up to you. And go in with your orange here. Go to the left a little bit more on that one. Lovely. All right, we're getting some more colors in there. Looks really good. So next we're gonna be adding some some lighter yellows. So I'm just going to take a quick break and clean off my brush, and we'll return to that. Okay, so welcome back to the sunflower. So he's had another break. So now we're going to add some uh, darks and lights again into the sunflower, but first we're going to put some uh, more light yellow into the corner to make that really stand out, and a few up there. So um, we're going to go back into the cadmium yellow. We're going to use a fan brush. This on my palette. And this background should be pretty dry by now, so here's the fan brush. Here's my cadmium yellow. So I'm just going to dab it in there. And dab it on top of your palette for a little bit. I'm going to go in and just do some, some larger hits with a lot of texture in this corner. As you can see, it's, it's lighter. It's coming on thicker. So like I said, the uh, highlights, you kind of use sparingly. This far right corner and up over here is going to be where we're going to have the most of the highlights. So go ahead and you can apply that somewhat generously to get that texture. And then do some spackling going out, some lighter stippling. Remember to be random in your movements. I'm going to make that really just stand out. Put some back here. Up in this corner. And some over here. And the left hand side. Maybe just a little bit more. And spackle here a little bit, really lightly. See, it really pops out over here on the side. And that's because it's darker than the rest of the canvas. And I just kind of hit it light on the, uh, the dark side. Just want a little bit. We've got some fun textures for the background. Now we want to take some of those highlights into the um, sunflower. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this fan brush off.
And actually, before we go any further, let's bring some of that um, dark blue back in. I think that'll look nice to have this darker one. So go back to this uh, medium color blue right here. It's the cobalt blue. And let's just work some of that in a little bit. Let's put it in where the, the lighter blue areas are at. That'll help to make it pop a little bit more. And once again, don't worry if you go over your, your petals somewhat. Try to avoid the, um, the, the yellow though, because we just put that in, if you can. of the, the cobalt blue. Get some in there. And that'll really help to pull the sunflower forward. So now we'll go ahead and add some of those lights um, into the petals. Let me just do a little more blue over there. All right, last minute decision there. We'll go back in a little later and just add a little more of the, the yellows in there. I think that's a nice transition. So we've got some nice blue background, some other marks, dark area, lights. Um, so we said we'll go back in and put some more yellow in there. Um, unless it might be able to take it now, you can give it a try. Sometimes with the highlights, you just gotta hit it once. Um, so I just cleaned off my fan brush. I'm just gonna put a few up here. There. It looks like it took that. Fantastic. All right. A few down there. Okay. So clean that fan brush off, and then we'll work some lights and darks into the sunflower. So I'm going to mix some um, cadmium red, and you can use any brand once again with this nice uh, orange. So I'll be using the uh, smaller round tip brush. So go ahead and dip into the cadmium red. And my blue is already dry so I'm not too worried about that pulling up and I don't mind if I get a little bit of the yellow. So we're trying to get a, a little bit of a darker color of the orange, so do orangish red. We'll see how that looks. We might add a little bit of burnt umber in there. But we'll take a look real quick. So once again, we're defining more of the uh, the left side, so getting that shadow set. Um, and then we're also gonna do like center spines on the petals. So actually, let's get those uh, center spines set up. So I would say just do a few you don't have to connect the line all the way through, that's when it starts to look a little fake. So just choose a few of your uh, your petals and give it that line. Once again, you know, don't don't pull the line all the way through. That way it looks more natural. That one there. I'll put one here. We 
You might have to go a little bit darker on the ones in the background for those to stand out. And there. And over here. So once again, we're just hitting the, uh, the center line. And sometimes I'll anchor my finger under a dry spot to help me get that line going. And remember to use uh, the twirling technique with your brush to make sure you drag it all the way out and get a fine tip point like this. Do you see that? There we go. Sorry. Ta da. Okay. Once again, I'll anchor my finger there. I'll do a line there. Line here. Don't feel like you have to press down really hard. That's what allows the line to break up in the center. And then there's some lines back here. We might have to go a little bit darker on those. You can hardly see them. So before we do that, let's uh, kind of shade the, the left side of these, the front ones. So I'm going to put my shadow right there. Go a little bit to the left. And go back into your paints if you need it. You also might need to put your uh, paint into a little bit of water. Just a little bit. Run that through. See if it applies a little bit smoother. There we go. It's not as bumpy. So I just hit a few of these on the the left side over here with the light, then we start getting down the bottom, it's going to be more on the, uh, well, I'll go to the left side again. So about right here, I'll have it go on the left over here. And this one. And one right here. As it gets back to the top, we'll switch it over more to the left side. So it wouldn't be, you're right now you're hitting the right side on that one, so you have to go over to the left and get that side. There. That starts to break it up a little bit more in the lights and darks. So for the, uh, well, since we're in here um, and we do have some cadmium still, just go ahead and clean off your, your small round brush and you can jump back into the cadmium and you can start to get more of those highlights in there. So this is going to be the, the top right corner. Let me make sure this is recording. Yep. Okay. So this will be the top right corner. So I'm going to add some up there. And bring that down. You might want to do these tips a little bit over here in the back. Don't go all the way down because it's going to get darker as it gets into the, the flower. There's another one. You might want to get some more cadmium. I'm going to run in low. There's some more right there. And once again, get into the get on the tip of your brush. And you can see this cadmium is a little bit lighter than the last one, so that helps. And at the very end we might just want to add a little bit of white to the cadmium and just do the last highlights on there. Once again, I'm hitting more of the right-hand side, a little bit of this area at the tip on the left. We really want to get those highlights prominent. Okay. 
And then when it comes to using the cadmium in the back, we're going to use just a little less. Because we want to make those highlights in the forefront more recognizable. And this one we didn't really fully address. We're going to have to probably put a line in there to make that one stand out. Let's put those two together. Put a little bit on the left. And there's some at the top of this one because that's the part that's closest to the light. And then I'll just bring it a little bit to the left, just a small amount. Same with this one. It's going to be more light at the top. And same here. So once again, we're just adding highlights on top of highlights and shadows go deeper and deeper until we get the right level we want. I'll put this one more to the right because that's where the light's coming from. And this one will be further to the right. This one's a little bit tucked behind this one, so I'll just give it some light there on the left, a little bit on the tip. And this one right here, let's do a little bit on the right hand side. This one's kind of tucked behind this one, so it'll be a little bit of shadow, so I'll leave it a little darker. That ochre is right there. And we might as well work the, the outer tips on this one. So the forefront petals will have the most light. Um, so we want to keep those really bright and vivid looking. So I think that might be good enough. Like I said, we'll probably go back with white with cadmium just to do the final push on the highlights. Let's see, this one's pretty close to the sun too, so I'll just let that one go around. There we go. And now we're going to go ahead and just put some highlights on the ones behind it. Not so many, but just enough to really give them that additional light. Round this one out real quick. All right. So once again, roll your brush and we're going to start to put some lighter yellow at the top here. We'll go a little bit to the right. And as you're going to see, it's not as much as the other ones. It's just going to be a subtle hint. This one might go down a little bit more. As the light will probably hit that to about right there. This one will bring the tip across. And this is where you can make your, your tips a little bit more refined. I'll put one right here. And just another one there. And same up here. And you'll have it go down just a little bit. If you notice, the lighter, the lighter you touch your paint into the paint color behind it, it starts to blend a little bit, so that's kind of nice. So always just remember that the side the light's coming from is going to have the thickest highlight stroke. So here's a good example. There's the thickest stroke on the right. And then just bring a really tiny one off to the side. I might carry that down a little bit more to the right, but try not to intersect it with this one in front. So now the tips of the sunflower are really starting to pop out. And like I said, once we get the uh, cadmium with the white on it, then that will be the, the final push of the color, which will make it really pop. So now the light's coming down this way, so we'll have a little bit more on the flat surface. So 
So this one I'll just kind of put right at the tip right there. Put a little more on that one. And go back over here. The highlights are the fun part. You can really start seeing your painting start to take shape, which is awesome to watch. Once again, if you feel like it's kind of dragging your brush, just put a little bit of water on the end of it, just dip it in there. Your water should be kind of the color of the sunflower. It shouldn't be blue or anything. If it is, go ahead and clean out your water. So let me come back and do the really light highlights with the white, and we'll just put even smaller amounts of it on the sunflower. And like I said, that'll help to really pop it out. And down here, there won't be very much highlight because these are really tucked back. So that'll be very minimal on the highlights in this area. It's probably on the tips, maybe a little bit to the, the right hand side. And we're going to go into this darker umber and set some defining points too. Some shadows. I'll put a little bit there at this tip. And we'll also go back to the stem and add some greens. It's kind of nice to carry the colors all the way through the canvas though, or the painting, because then it just ties everything together. See, I have a lot of blue in this area. I'm going to put the blue back in, so I'll do another run over with the cadmium for that one. We're starting to get back to the light source, so you can start putting a longer edge on the side of your petals. Okay, then we'll go back in with a little bit of a, a redder with the a red color with the um, umber and just kind of work that in. Um, but since we're already in the cadmium yellow, let's hit this uh, center bulb again, the, the seed pod in the center with the, the cadmium. Um, but before we do that, actually, we should probably go back and add some more green in here. So we'll do first, um, just do a few dots first of the yellow in the center of that green and then go back to adding that lime green. So here's the cadmium. I'm just gonna do just a few little dots, not that many, just to kind of tie all the colors together. Then I'm gonna take the lime green and work that around the edges, just to really bring that green color forward. Okay. A few 
few more dots in there. We still have some dark area up in the top in the top right area, so don't put too many in that spot. There's some dots there. I think that's good enough. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the uh, the cadmium dots in the center. So back into your, your cadmium yellow, and then we're just gonna start adding some dots in here to highlight that. Uh, so we'll start at the top in this area. And this is where you can get a little bit thicker in the paint. It looks pretty nice. So we'll do quite a few at the top and then do some, not as many in the lower area. So now you have kind of an orangish brown at the bottom, then you have some umber brown, then you have some orange, and you have a mid-grade yellow, and now you have a really bright yellow coming in. So this gives a really nice layer of stippled colors in your sunflower. And once again, you're adding another texture element right next to your petals which makes it that much more interesting. So as you can see, I'm not putting as many down below. And when I get the really light yellow ones, I'm probably just gonna do white, cadmium white at the top. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna go back in and just add a few last touches. Um, so we're gonna add some more darks, some more lights, add a little green to the stem, and just really wrap this whole thing together and do the last refining process on it. Probably put some more darker dots in there and some lighter yellows, um, like I said, the stem down here, and uh, just get some darker edges on the, the back ones. So let's start with the, the darker areas first. So um, use your, your small brush, your small round or you can use your medium round. I'm gonna to stick to my medium round. I don't think I really need my small round. This has a nice uh, tip on it. So I'm gonna go back into this um, burnt umber right here. A little bit on my palette. And I want to get some more of the red gold. This just dried up a little bit. And I'll just add a dab of the um, cadmium red. So we get these three colors together. This blue is dried by now for me, so I'm not too worried about putting it on the palette there. So I'm gonna take my brush and just work those colors together a little bit until I get something a little bit darker than everything else but still having that nice kind of orangish red color. I like to keep that. And just go ahead and test it on your canvas to see how it looks. So I think that might be a good color right there. I'm gonna keep mixing that. Maybe a little more red. There, that might do it. And I'm just gonna take it to the left a little bit. There, that really makes it stand out some more. So I'm just gonna go on to the left of the ones in the back and take it around the bottom a little bit, but not all the way around to help define those edges. You can do a few in the front too to help that keep popping it forward a little bit more. And then over here, the light source, it'll be, the shadow will be more of on this side. So I'll put that down there. 
We'll jump back in this color. Down there. And jump back in, roll your brush. Get this one. This one in the back. So it really starts to help define where those petals are at. And then I'll have a little bit more light source all the way around the bottom since this is facing away. So the shadow will be right down there. And I'm going to mix these two a little bit more again. Now that I've got a good idea of what the color combination should be. And I'm just going to roll that out again. Let's test it. Still a nice dark color. Let's stick with that. And now I'm going to go to the right for these shadows. Now as you get close to the top, I'll just do a little bit on the left and right side since those tips will be highlighted. And then a little bit on this side. I'll do a small amount on this side. The shadows will be more on that edge. I'm going to jump in my water a little bit because it's the paint's dried enough that the uh, acrylic is just dragging on it, so it's kind of bumpy. I'd like to make that a little bit smoother. So I'll go to the left over here and here. And I'm going to Go to the other side of the camera so I can get the, the far left side of this painting. You can still see where I put my marks. And there. And when I get to the far left, I'm going to probably add just a little bit more brown because it will be a little bit darker over here. You can put the shadows on the left a little bit heavier, especially on the ones underneath, just to show that there's a shadow happening. And we go back to the right on a few of these because we're curving around once again, back to the top. So the light would be hitting here and the shadow would be on that side. Like I said, you can really start to see your petals take shape. Your sunflowers coming to life a little bit more. And I'm going to jump back into my brown a little bit while I'm over here and just do like little triangles coming out around these edges of the petals just to kind of show that the pot is connecting with the petals. Mimics more what a sunflower does. I'm just going to bring those out a little bit. I'm just going to do that more on the, the side where there's a lot of a lot of those dots because that's the, the darker area. And I might do a few more darker shadows down here with the, the dark brown. Once again, just to really reinforce this darker left side.
then as I get close to the top, I'm going to go back to that yellowish red and brown. A little less of the, uh, the brown. And I'm going to put my finger in a dry spot. Let's go to the left of that. I'll probably jump back into the brown. It seems to be a little bit too light. So just uh, gauge kind of how your shadows are looking. You might want to just go back in and do a little bit more of the, the darker color right here. So I got the brown. Let's see how that looks. So I'm going to put a little bit further to the left side to leave those nice dark colors. So that goes a, a medium dark, mid dark, and very dark on the shadows. The key here is not to fully outline everything with the same color, it's to kind of mix it up and that's why I like to keep them uh, constantly mixing on a palette because it kind of changes the colors a little bit and just hits certain edges. I'm going to jump a little bit darker on that one. On the far left, I'll just do kind of the base area. So we're not going to do as much. We're going to get a little bit smaller as we get to the highlights. So we're still giving it some definition, but we're just not doing as much dark in this upper area. We'll just hit the, the softer areas. These are further away from the light and they're close to the bulb, so it's okay to do that. And then what I'm doing here with shadows, you know, as you can tell, these are overlapping a little bit. So feel free to go into the ones in the far back and just kind of give them a darker shadow. And once again, that kind of forces the pushing it further back in the space. There's a dark shadow there. Put a dark one there. A dark one there. So now as you can see, we're really building this up. This is where you get to have more fun with it and just kind of make your decisions on how you want your flower to, to round out this way with the lights and darks. You should have a pretty good sense by now how to lay those down. I might go back in my red and do a few little spines in the center of the, the blooms. Make sure the, the center part of the spines and the petals are right in between the light and the dark. And remember not to connect everything. Once again, it's having that random element. And you can keep it random by just jumping around on your canvas with your brush. That technique helps also. Lovely. And I'm going to go back in and do a few more darker browns around this area. So I'm going to jump to the, the right side of my canvas. And I don't really mind if there's that orange and red on this because the dark brown will dominate that. So I'm just going to get a good amount on my tip here. And I'm just going to start to add a few more of these dark elements. Try to avoid the lovely yellows you have. And we're going to go over those one more time just to pop those forward a little bit more. So you, the key is not to cover a lot of the orange or the yellow, but just to give a few more darker ones down below. So we're going back to our stippling here. up here just to carry that color through. Very nice. See, it's all coming together when those lights and darks start hitting.
And as a painter, you are the one that gets to decide when you're done with it. So some people keep going with it. Some people say they're done and uh, hang it up and be and just enjoy it. There's been times where I've hung up a piece and uh, took it down a year later and worked on it. So you're never really done with a piece. You just sometimes take a break from it. So we have some nice, lovely darks going on right now. Um, we have our, our little triangular pieces coming out onto the petals, which kind of ties the center bloom together with the sunflower. So go ahead and take this time just to add any extra darks you think that your sunflower may need. And then we'll move to the, the lighter colors. I'm just going to put a little bit on the stem on the left hand side. We're going to go in with some green and tie that whole thing together. Fun. Okay, so. Now let's jump back into our uh, lime green, and we're going to use a little bit of cadmium yellow also. So just put a little bit on my plate with the really rich cadmium yellow. And at this point, we're going to want to add some white to this one. All right, so I'm back, found my white. Um, so just put uh, some there is probably more than I needed. White is very powerful, so white and black should be used very sparingly. Um, and I prefer to avoid black when I can. I try to use purples, reds, blues. Um, whites you really can't get away from. Um, but you just need a little bit. Like I said, I put a little too much on this. But you can use any white, uh, flake white, titanium white. It doesn't really matter on acrylics. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to introduce the white yet. I'm going to work on just getting a nice green on the stem. So I don't want it to green lime. I want to have it a little more of a combination of the cadmium and the lime green. Let me put that on here and just see how that looks. I'm going to put it a little bit to the left side over here. Remember, there's some shadows in this area, so let's start our, our lights about right here. And then we'll make that a little bit larger at the bottom. We'll put that on that side. There, then we can introduce some of the green element in there. I might just put a few little lines to the left of that, just to add some interesting texture. Then I'll go in one more time with just the straight green just to pull those two colors together. Just add a little bit there. Um, and since I do have a nice lime green, yellow, I might go back up here and just add a few of those. Some more down there. Great. So the last part we're gonna do is add this cadmium yellow to some white and really do those last final highlights on there to make it pop out. So I'm going to dip my medium round into some yellow here. Feel free to jump to this smaller round if you want. I'm going to stick to this medium round. So try to get something more of a canary yellow color. I'm going to roll my brush out again. Now these are going to be the lightest pieces on us. We don't want too many and you want to start at the part where it would be the most light when your brush is loaded with paint, which would be up here. So let's just do a few touches to see how light it is. That's very light. We like it. So we're just going to do a few to the left just to get that really light texture element. And this is where you can go a little bit thicker on your, your paints. 
Make sure not to completely cover the yellow that you did. You just want to do a little bit. So I'm going to highlight it there. I'm just going to dab it at the end. So you can still see I have yellow, the canary yellow, or the, the cadmium yellow, and then more of the light canary yellow at the top. So I'll put a few up here. So we'll do the stronger tips in the top right, and we'll do just a very little bit at the bottom, not very much. And let's get a few of these dots up here for the highlights. And just keep mixing the, the yellow and the white together until you get the combination that you want. I put one more in this area because we're getting lower once again. This would get the most light, the very top part of the petal. And so this is the final highlight element on your flower. So at the very bottom, I'll just put a little bit there, small amount there, just a tad little touches at the tips. Don't go too heavy into this or else it'll look kind of silly. Remember, these are just accents, which makes them very lovely. And this tutorial is going to wrap up pretty soon here, but as I mentioned, feel free to constantly revisit. If you want to let your paint dry, then come back and do thicker elements on your flower. Just start building up that color. That's kind of fun too. Like I said, you don't always have to finish this right away. You can always revisit it. That's at a very nice point right now. Got a lot of good highlights, good dark areas. Might do a few more around the, the center bloom. I'll probably bring a, it down here a little bit. Okay, right by the, the dark edge up here. To have that nice dark light contrast. And also with the white, I might want to add just a little bit in the texture background, just to pull that together. Very, very small amount though. I'll probably keep it over the, the yellow. And once again, that helps to tie things together. That's up to you if you want to do this or not. Like I said, uh, starting to get to the point where it's it's more your painting. You've made your decisions along the way of how to apply the, the strokes. I've just been a, a visual guide. The more comfortable and confident you get with your paints and your ability to lay down brush strokes and make decisions on where the light's at, you'll be able to, to take this on your own and run with it. So I'm very happy with where this is at, so I'm going to call this done. And here is your lovely sunflower. Congratulations! I hope you have a lovely place to put it on your wall and uh, where there's sun on it so you can watch the textures start to show little shadows. 
once again, like I said, feel free to revisit it and start building those colors up a little more. Uh, some people like to play with palette knives and put that on there for the artists who know that. Um, so once again, I'll just kind of recap what we used. So we used a large round. We used a medium round. And we had a small round available. didn't really use it, but some of you might have used the small round. We had the fun fan brush and the flat brush. And the colors we used, um, and once again, for artists who aren't comfortable mixing their colors, you can just buy up straight. For those of you who are comfortable mixing colors, you know which ones to put together to make these color combinations. Have to say though, purple is not the easiest to get. Um, I know the red blue combination, but sometimes it doesn't look quite right. So you can play around with that. Um, we have the red, and this is a cadmium medium hue, but you can just use pretty much any red. Got this one, Liquitex, uh, the basic, and this one is a brilliant yellow green. I have the orange, which is a cadmium orange. This is more of the, the lighter oranges. And we have a um, primary yellow or cadmium yellow, you can use that. And then I have these other A2, these are more of the student grade ones. This is the ultramarine blue, um, but once again, you can use any ultramarine blue. And then for the browns, we used a burnt umber. And we have the purple dioxide, um, but you can just grab any purple. We have a red gold right here. You can see that color a little bit better. It's more of a kind of a more neonish orange color. And the yellow okra, or oxide, but you can also use yellow okra for this color right here. And that's also A2. We also had the, um, we had white, which is pretty basic. Um, don't really need to show you one for that. And then we had one that's a cobalt blue. Um, I actually have it in a bigger tube because I teach classes, but um, so you can use cerulean blue, which is this one that I used, or the cobalt blue. So that is all the colors and paintbrushes we used on a 10 by 10 canvas. So hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, hopefully you'll visit another one. All right, enjoy and keep creating.